Father, we thank you so much for your love to us, uh, for your grace towards us. Uh, we thank you that just as ordinary men, uh, men who are faltering and failing and stumbling through life quite a lot of the time, uh, you don't give up on us. You are at work in each one of our lives. Uh, you love your children. You love your people. Uh, you discipline those that you love. And we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to trust you, uh, to look to you in every period of our lives, whether it be good or bad, that we keep our eyes fixed on you by faith. So help us this morning as, as George talks to us uh, and tells us a bit about your servant Moses, uh, that we would learn from his example too. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Andy. Well, I'm just going to read some verses from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to be looking at what it says there about Moses and his faith. And then we're just going to uh, spend a bit of time in those verses thinking about what we can learn from Moses. So Hebrews 11 verse 23 through to 29. Here we've got a description of Moses and the faith that he had. Hebrews 11 23 says, By faith Moses when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents, because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. And so we're going to be looking at these verses, and just as a, as, as a way of introduction, I'm sure we're all aware of this, but we live in a culture today that really views faith and people who have faith in God as something that is really a, a kind of a, a mental weakness. That many people, I, I meet them all the time on the streets, people say, I don't, I don't believe in faith, I, I believe in science, and they, they kind of contrast the two, something you can actually rely on based upon faith, which is blind, you can't rely on it, it just makes you feel good, and, and that's why people have it, make them feel better, maybe they're scared of dying, maybe they're scared of the future, so they cling to this thing called faith, just to make them feel a bit better about themselves. And this is how a lot of people today in our culture view faith. They think that men who have faith do so uh, because they're, they're, they're weak-minded and, and they need a crutch. They need something to lean on, so this is what they do. The Bible, however, paints faith as something very different, doesn't it? Faith in God. It, the Bible teaches that faith in God is something that enables men to accomplish heroic things for God and for his people. The Bible paints men of faith as, as people who are not weak, but who are made strong by God, and, and people who are used by God. And as you read through the scriptures, you see that the strongest men are often the ones who have the strongest faith. And one of these men is, is Moses, as we're going to see as we go through these verses together. Now, it's important we just understand very quickly the, the, the context of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews was written to people who were tempted to go back from faith in Jesus Christ to Judaism, written to Jews who were tempted to return back to the legalism of Judaism. And so the author, as we see in verse 39 of chapter 10, the author is saying uh, that we're not of those who draw back to perdition. We don't want to go away from Christ. He says, but we are of those who believe to the saving of the soul. And so these men and women, they were tempted to go away from Christ back to Judaism and to deny the faith. <clears throat> and so the writer is encouraging them to remain faithful to Christ. And it's in, he then gives us this chapter of, of Hebrews 11, and he tells us of all these people in history who had faith, 
and they had faith in Christ. And so that's the point that he's making in these verses. And these people, they were tempted to go back to Moses, to the law, and to depend on that for righteousness. They were going to uh, reject the righteousness that comes by faith in Jesus Christ. They were going to leave that, and they were going to try to go back to Judaism and establish their own righteousness, to make themselves right before God with their own works. And so the writer says, well, if you're going to go back to Moses, you need to know this about Moses. Moses himself was a man of faith, and he too had faith in Christ. And so that is the point that is being made in these verses. And in order to prove to the audience that Moses was a man of faith, he gives us a, a spiritual biography of Moses. In a few verses, we see how Moses was a man of faith from when he was born to when he died, from when he was a baby to when he was middle-aged to when he was an old man. He had faith in God. And so I want us this morning to look at this biography of Moses, starting from when he was a baby to when he was a man to when he was an old man. And for us to look at his faith and for us to, by God's grace, to learn from it and to have our own faith strengthened and that it might grow. And I will just say this, as we think about faith and these men of faith and our own faith, the Bible teaches that faith is, is a gift of God. It's by grace. God works this faith in us. And so we need to seek him, don't we? Uh, the, the, the disciples said to Jesus, uh, increase our faith. And so that's our prayer, isn't it? That God would increase our faith this morning. So we're going, to, we're going to look at this very quickly in three parts. Firstly, we see Moses had faithful parents. Then we see that Moses uh, had faith when he was young, a young man. And then we see that Moses had faith when he was an old man. He had faithful parents. He had faith when he was a young man. And he had faith when he was an old man. So firstly then, we're told in verse 23 of the background that Moses had. And there we see that he had a, a background of believing parents. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. So here we see that Moses had a foundation of faith, faith in the God of Israel. He had parents who believed. And it says there that they saw that Moses was a special baby. They saw there was something special about him, so they, they hid him for three months. And many suggest that, that his parents believed that God was, was faithful, and he had promised he was going to send a deliverer, someone who would deliver his people out of Egypt. Joseph, before he died, spoke about that. He says, when you go out of the land which God has promised, take my bones with you. Well, they were waiting for this deliverer, the parents of Moses saw this baby was different and many suggest perhaps they thought this could be the deliverer that we've been waiting for. And so trusting God, having faith in God and not fearing Pharaoh, they hid the baby for three months until it was strong enough to be able to survive a little time of, of, of being put out in the, in the basket on the water. So they had faith in God and we know the story don't we? That when they put the baby Moses in the basket, he, he floated down the river Nile and God in his providence saw to it that Pharaoh's daughter was washing, cleaning herself in the Nile and all of a sudden she, see, she hears his baby crying, she opens the basket and here's one of these Hebrew children and in God's providence, <coughs> Moses' sister was there, she followed the baby down the Nile and Pharaoh's daughter saw her and said, uh, uh, well, uh, Moses' sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, do you want me to get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby? And she just so happened that her mother was able to do that, and Moses was given back to his parents, and he was weaned by his parents. Now, we don't know how long Moses was with his parents for, but some suggest I was uh, listening to John MacArthur the other day, trying to get some insight on this, and he suggested that, that it could have been even up to the age of 12 that Moses was with his parents. Some would say younger. The fact is, we, we, we can be fairly confident that, that they were able to influence Moses and teach him about God, about the God of Israel, about Yahweh. So he had a foundation of 
of faith in the true and living God. They taught him. Not only did they teach him, they would have prayed for him, wouldn't they? So Moses had a foundation of believing parents who taught him and who prayed for him. So that was, that was his background. And we can be encouraged by that because after Moses was given back to Pharaoh, he was then raised as an Egyptian. He was taught their ways. He was educated uh, in all of the Egyptian uh, education. It's probably a better way of putting that, but I haven't got it to mind. But, and and he, he was steeped in this, in this paganism. And yet, when he was around 40 years of age, he returned back to his people and he had faith in the true and living God. And we can be encouraged by that before we go any further. Many of you have got children or grandchildren and, and, and maybe... Maybe they are like Moses when he was in Egypt and, and they're, they're, they're currently not with the people of God. They're currently not believing. Well, Moses had this foundation, these faithful parents who taught him and who prayed for him. And God in his grace, well, well Moses uh, had, a, had a faith in the true and living God and he, and he came back to the people of God. So he had this foundation and this foundation served him in, 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 in uh, coming back to the true and living God and knowing him and serving him. So that's an encouragement, isn't it? Maybe you've got children or grandchildren and, and you've given them this foundation. You've, you've taught them. You've prayed for them. And maybe they're, 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 they're still like Moses when he was in Egypt. Well, we must keep praying, mustn't we? And keep chipping away. Because Moses came back and he was greatly used by God. And that's an encouraging thing. Proverbs says, train a child in the way that he should, he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Moses had this faithful foundation, these believing parents. And as in a minute, we're going to see that that was vital to the rest of his life. But there's also a challenge here. There's an encouragement there. There's also a challenge. And the challenge is, are we taking responsibility for the spiritual nurture of our children? Are we doing things like family worship? around the dinner table, if you've got young children, or if you're planning on having young children? Do you, do you pray with them around the table? Do you read the scriptures together? Do you say grace before your meal? After your meal, are you doing family worship? Are, 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 are we living consistent Christian lives before our children? All of these things are going to affect how our children, what they know, what they believe, and how they view Christianity. And so there is a challenge, isn't there? We, we have to take responsibility for the spiritual nurture of our children. We can trust that Moses' parents did that. There's also an encouragement that even though Moses went away into Egypt and was steeped in paganism and all the, and all the idolatry, yet he, he, he came back and he returned to his people and he served the true and living God. He had this foundation. Well, that was when he was a baby. Moses had faithful parents. Next we see that Moses had faith when he was young. He had this, this foundation of faith, but then he had his own faith as well. And he had faith when he was a young man. And this is what we see in verse 24 and through to 26. There we learn that when he became a grown man, when he came of age, it says in my translation here, or when he grew up, he rejected being an Egyptian and being in Pharaoh's household and all of the pleasures, all of the money, all of the wealth, all of the prestige and power, he rejected all of that and he chose rather to be identified with these slaves. These people that were being whipped and badly treated, these brick makers, they're like uh, today in, 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 in uh, a Monday example could be in, in Pakistan. A lot of Christians there are, are, are really so poor they have to make bricks and they're treated awfully. And it's like, it's, it's, it's like one of the uh, aristocracy there, or I don't know if they have a royal family, but pow a powerful person in, in Pakistan deciding that I'm going to identify with these brick makers, these Christians, these second class citizens. Well, that was what Moses did. And he chose rather than uh, enjoying the, the, the temporary pleasures of sin, he chose rather to suffer affliction with God's people. Now we know that he did this around the age of 40. 
but it must have been before he actually turned 40 that he decided that he believed in the true and living God. He was a Hebrew. He wanted to follow Yahweh and he wanted to help God's people. So he'd obviously made a decision. He, have, he obviously had faith before he turned 40, but around the age of 40, he, he did something about it. And he chose, it says, to, to be identified with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin. And it was his faith in God that caused him to choose that. And then it goes on, and it says there, in verse 26, that he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. So there we see that Moses didn't just have faith in God, but he also had faith in the Christ, in the Messiah, the promised Saviour that God had promised. Now we know who that is, don't we? Jesus Christ. So the Bible is teaching here that he was looking forward to the Saviour and he had faith in him. Now we look back, don't we? We look back to Christ. He has come, he has died, he has risen. But while Moses was looking forward and he had faith in Christ and it says that he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater, greater riches than treasures in Egypt. When it says the reproach of Christ, he is referring here to the fact that the people who believe in Christ suffer reproach. There is a reproach for following Jesus. Moses experienced that as he looked forward to Christ. This is what is being said here. And he, and he chose that reproach, that suffering for Christ, greater riches than all of the pleasure and enjoyment that he could have had in the palace in Egypt. He was looking forward to Christ. He had faith in Jesus Christ. And we know this, don't we, from the prophecies that he wrote. He says in Deuteronomy 18.15, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from the midst of your brethren. Him you shall hear. A prophet like him, he says. Well, Moses was the deliverer. He, he rescued the people out of Egypt. He took them from slavery into the promised land. He says, the deliverer like me is coming. Who is that? Jesus Christ, who takes his people from the slavery of sin into the, the Canaan of heaven. And Moses spoke about him. Jesus says in John 5, 45, 47, Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, you, how will you believe my words? And Moses had faith in Christ. And he chose rather to suffer for Christ than enjoy all the wealth and pleasures of Egypt. And then it says at the end of verse 26, he did that because he looked forward to the reward. He had faith in the promises of God, and he looked forward to the reward, not the earthly reward, because he never got into the land. He got to see it, but he never got to enjoy it. It's speaking here about the heavenly reward, the eternal reward, the reward that Jesus gives to those who trust in him. 1 Peter 1.4 says it's an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. So Moses had faith in God. He had faith in the Christ, the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he had faith in the promises of God, the reward of heaven to those who put their trust in Christ. And it was this faith that caused him to reject the pleasures of sin and the easy way in Egypt and to suffer reproach with God's people. He chose suffering rather than pleasure because he had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he trusted in the promise of eternal reward. And the point that's being driven home here by the author is that Moses was willing to suffer for Christ. And he's saying to these, these Hebrew Christians in the first century, he's saying that, that you are tempted to go away from Christ because you're suffering for being a Christian. You want to go back to Judaism. Well, Moses, he had faith in Christ and he was willing to suffer for Christ. So if you want to follow Moses, then you need to suffer for Christ as well. And that's the point that he's making. Now, before we go on to look at where Moses was an old man, we've got to ask a few questions about this as we apply it to ourselves. Firstly, do you have faith in Christ? Can you say, that, just like Moses, that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that, that you are trusting in him to take away all your sins, to make you right with God? Can you say that you're not looking at your own good works, but that you're trusting in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, that he rose from the dead, and that it's by believing in him alone that you are uh, sure of heaven. Can you say that Jesus Christ is your saviour? Are you willing to suffer for Christ like Moses? 
Or would you rather take the easy route and, and not stick your neck out? There's a, a Chinese proverb, I think it is. Tal can correct me later if it's Chinese, but, but it's the, 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 the nail that sticks out is the one that gets hammered. Are you willing not to be the nail that sticks out for Christ? Well, Moses was willing to stick out for Christ. He was willing to suffer reproach for Christ and suffer with his people. Is our faith strong enough that, that we are willing to do that? Are we living in light of the reward? That's what Moses did. Moses lived his life in light of heaven. His faith was in the promises of God and he, he looked to the reward. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Moses wasn't looking at the things which were seen, the, the palaces in Egypt, the wealth, the prestige, but he was looking at the things which were not seen, the heavenly riches, to be with Christ forever. Is that us? Is that our faith? Is this the kind of faith that, that we have? Well, this was the kind of faith that Moses had. He had it because he had this foundation of believing parents. He had it when he was a young man and he acted upon it and it influenced the way that he lived and the choices that he made. And next we see very quickly that he had it as an old man. He had this faith as an old man. Moses was in his 80s when the Lord appeared to him at the burning bush and called him to deliver his people from Egypt. Moses, when he was around 40, he thought that he was going to help the people of God, the Israelites. He was probably conscious that he was perhaps the chosen deliverer, excuse me, that would rescue the people out of Egypt. So he has a plan and he decides that one day he's going to go to the, Egypt, to, the, to the Israelites, he's going to visit his people and he's going to look at their suffering. And he does that and he sees that there's an Egyptian who is mistreating one of the Israelites. And so he kills him and he buries him in the sand. And then the next day Moses goes out and he sees two Israelites fighting with each other. And Moses tries to stop them. And one of the Israelites says, are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian yesterday? So Moses realised the news is out and he fled to Midian. And he was in Midian for 40 years looking after sheep. Now Moses thought that he was this great deliverer and it's true he was. But he tried to do it in his own strength in the age of 40. He had faith in God, but yet he didn't rely upon God and God's timing to deliver the people of God. He made a mess of it. So he went into Midian for 40 years. And it's after 40 years, when he was 80, when he was weak, when he was tired, when his bones were creaking, when his energy levels were low, it was when he was 80 that then God said, now is the time that I'm going to use you. And at the age of 80, up until, I think he died at the age of 120, he, 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 he was used by God to deliver the people of Egypt. He, he was a man of faith, even when he was old. And we can argue his faith was strongest when he was weakest and oldest. And so when he was 80, what did he do? Well, his faith in God caused him to forsake Egypt, verse 27, caused him to keep the Passover, verse 28, and caused him to pass through the Red Sea, verse 29. In other words, his faith in God made him trust God for things that were totally impossible. Firstly, he forsook Egypt and he did not fear the king. He did not fear Pharaoh. Pharaoh had all the power in the world. Pharaoh could have uh, snuffed him out easily. But yet Moses boldly again and again and again goes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. Pharaoh says, if you come back again, I'm going to kill you. What does Moses do? Well, he goes back again. And he's telling this, this man with all this power, you need to let the slaves go, or God's going to ruin you. And God, what, step by step, uh, demolishes Egypt. And yet Pharaoh, uh, Moses keeps going into Pharaoh, and he keeps demanding, let the people go. And Moses did this, by faith. He could see all the power of Pharaoh. He, he could see it all. But yet it says he endured or he kept on going because he saw him who is invisible. He had faith in the invisible God, in the true and living God. And so because he had faith in the abiding presence and care of Almighty God, he kept on going to Pharaoh and he wasn't afraid of him. <clears throat> 
He forsook Egypt, verse 27. Then in verse 28, another act of faith, he kept the Passover. Now why is this an act of faith? Well, think about what God said to Moses at the Passover. God said to Moses, if you take the blood of the lamb and sprinkle it on the doorpost of the house, when the angel comes to destroy all the firstborns, all the firstborns in the houses without, uh, with the blood will be safe. Now Moses, I'm sure he looked at that and thought, how does that work? How does that make sense? And yet, he had faith in the word of God. He had faith in what God said. And he did it. And he trusted God. And we, we know the story. All the firstborns in Egypt died. The animals, even the firstborns in Pharaoh's household, they all died. And yet the ones that had the blood on the house, on, on the doorposts, all the Hebrew children, were safe. Now that was an act of faith had to trust in the word of God. Something that, that, that didn't really make sense. Now we can, look, we can look back at that, can't we? And it makes sense to us. The blood is a picture, the Passover is a picture of Christ. When, 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 when you have the, the blood of Christ uh, applied to you, if you like, uh, judgment, you're, you're passed over in judgment. You, your sins are, are forgiven. You're not destroyed. But Moses, what did he have to draw upon? Well, the word of God. And he had faith in God. So he obeyed God. The, uh, Andy mentioned it a few weeks back. I, th I think he got it from John Calvin. Abraham believed that the bare, the naked word of God. It was enough that God said it. So he believed it. And that was what Moses did. That was his faith. God's word said it. So he did it. Even the Passover. Which probably was hard to understand why, why, why he needed to do it. But he, he trusted. And finally... We see that he had faith in God when it came to the Red Sea. Now notice that Hebrews here says Red Sea, not Reed Sea. Some commentators like to make it uh, a much smaller body of water. But the Bible says, no, it's, it's the Red Sea, that big body of water. That's what it says here. And yet Moses, by faith, passed through the Red Sea. Now you can imagine it, can't you? You've got a huge army, the most powerful army in the world, at your tail. You've got a bunch of slaves without probably any weapons that you're leading. And now you've come to this big body of water. And they probably can't swim very well. It's, uh, it is said that, 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 that generally Hebrew people don't like water very much. They've never really been a seafaring nation. I'm sure it's probably true back then as well. How are they going to cross this big body of water? Well, Moses had faith in God and God said, I'm going to part the sea. And you can just imagine, can't you? You're standing at, on, the sh on the shore, on, on the bank of this sea. And, and the, the water is like walls on either side. And you've got to walk through it. And they did. And they had faith in God. They trusted God. And when the Egyptians decided they would do the same, they didn't have faith in God. And well, they were drowned, weren't they? And they all died. And God wiped out their, their army. Well, that took faith. He had faith in God and his faithfulness and in his promises and in his word. And they obeyed him. And, and, and God delivered his people. And this was all when Moses was an old man. Moses had faith when he was old. Well, we see, don't we, that Moses was a man of faith. He had faithful parents, a faithful background which rescued him. They taught him. They prayed for him. He himself had faith. He had faith in Yahweh and he looked forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. He believed in him and he had faith in God's promises of the eternal reward. So he chose to endure suffering and affliction with God's people rather than enjoy temporary pleasures of sin and wealth because he believed in Christ and he believed in heaven. And he had faith to believe in the word of God. And he, 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 he led God's people out of Egypt because he trusted God. This was the faith that Moses had. And as I finish now, there's just three points for us to take away. Firstly, there's the point of faithfully teaching our children and praying for them. Being faithful fathers and grandparents. It was this foundation that Moses had that, 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 that God used in, in Moses' life to, to make him the, the man of faith that we've been reading about. Secondly, well, Moses had faith in Christ. Do you have faith in Christ? Can you say that Jesus Christ is your saviour and that you know 
you've been forgiven by God, that you know you've been rescued from hell, that you know you've got eternal life. Can you say that? Can you say that you've repented of your sins and that Jesus Christ is your saviour? And if you can say that, and I hope you can, I trust you can, are, are we choosing to suffer for Christ rather than enjoy temporary pleasures of sin? And are we looking forward to heaven? Is it, have we got heaven in our eye? Is that what is, 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 are we living our life in light of that, in light of the glory? Well, Moses did. And if you're older, well, is your faith strong? Are you obeying and trusting and serving God now in your old age? More so than in your young age. Moses was used more by God when he was an old man than when he was a young man. Well, that's encouraging, isn't it? But it's also challenging. Let us not uh, uh, put our slippers on and, uh, and ju just sit in the rocking chair and think, well, my time's done. No, Moses, when he was an old man, was used most by God more than anyone else. And so that, that's, that's encouraging, isn't it? Let us trust God. Let us have faith in him. Well, I'm going to just pray and then uh, hand over to, to someone. Father, we, we thank you and praise you for the gift of faith. We thank you, Father, that, that there's by faith in Christ that we're saved, that we're forgiven. And we thank you, Father, that Jesus said that if you just have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Father, we think of the words of the disciples, Lord, increase our faith. We pray, loving Father, that you will strengthen our faith, that you'll forgive us for when we've been faithless, and Father, that you will make us more and more faithful. Father, we thank you that you are faithful, and we pray that you'll help us to trust you more and more. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.